What you need to remember if you're gonna do graduation is it really only looks best if the length or the design line goes right up to that person's hairline. You really don't wanna do this look on someone who wants to wear their hair a little longer. In that case, I would do that traditional bob sectioning and, and layering like we did in the last video. And you can see at the end of it that it looks slightly graduated away those layers fall so they get the best of both worlds. They can wear it a little longer and they have a little bit of like a graduated shape. Um, that is the most I would probably do because anytime you try to do a traditional graduation at longer lengths, that hair comes down and then flips. It's a very flippy look. All the graduation wants to flip if it's left too long. So if you want that very sharp question mark that comes down into that hairline without any flip underneath, it needs to be the length of their hairline. So that's something you need to talk to your guest about prior to getting started. And then the other thing you need to determine, well, let's see, what are we doing here? The other thing we need to determine is if they want to have a solid design line or if they want to have that shape come up behind the ear and back down. If you want a solid design line, that graduation shape is actually very disconnected from the front to the back. If we follow graduation all the way to the front, graduation follows the hairline. So what that means is if I graduated from all the way from the back to the front, anywhere that hair gets higher, that design line is going to get higher. And anywhere that hairline comes back down, that design line is going to come back down. And that's where you see those graduated bobs where it's like this, up and back down. If you don't want that, if your client wants it a solid design line, then your graduation needs to be disconnected from the back to the front. And I will show you the way that I do that so that you don't end up with a hole behind the ear, which happens so easily as you're learning this haircut. We're gonna work on ways to help always avoid that. And to do that, you need to always be aware of the hairline and the design line. You need to keep that out of your shape as you get to the areas that wanna be thinner and come up. So I'll show you what I mean by that as we get to that point. But for now, we're going to go back through step one and do her length. Tip her down. And again, we want this to come right up to the hairline. In the last cut, I left it just a little bit longer. And in this one, I'm gonna take this a little shorter through the front. And if you wanna see these steps a little slower, definitely watch the last video where we do just an angled bob, but I'm gonna go through these steps a little bit quicker and show you how we do the design line so that we can get into step two, which would be the graduation. Okay, we established this based on the width of her neck. Again, I'll te teach all about that in the last video. And I'm gonna make this graduation come down just a little softer than I did last time. <clears throat> Without any elevation, I'm just cutting to that corner of the neck here and coming back on the other side and working back and forth so that if I come down longer, I can easily correct it and I don't get too far into this haircut finding out that I've dropped my guide and it's way longer on one side and way shorter on the other. It's going to happen anyway because it happens to the best of us but going back and forth and kind of sketching out your design is really helpful to avoid any mistakes that are hard to correct later. From this point, I'm going to elevate just slightly above my fingers, knowing that I have to go back in and correct that a little bit later. I'm okay with that. Coming over to this side. I don't want anything from the ear in there. Okay, and then I'm gonna tip her to the side. Oh, goodness, dropping my phone now. Now, as we get near the ear, we always wanna take that ear into consideration, make sure we're not leaving a hole. And I'm just kind of straightening this cut out a little bit just so you can see 
the difference between this cut and the last cut, but you could do a graduated bob with it longer like this. See the way that hair is crossing? We don't want to cut while it's doing that. Be clean in your combing. Taking the ear into consideration and then down to that length. Now I want to go back in, clean up where I graduated by lifting that hair over my finger. I'm going to lift my elbow so you can see what I'm doing. We don't want to have much elevation. And again, don't get too concerned about this because we're going to clean this up once we're done. And let me bring her over to the other side. And do the same thing over here. Remember on this side, if you're right-handed and on the other side, if you're left-handed, that you're gonna have one side where you're cutting shorter hair um, to longer hair, and you're gonna have another side where you're cutting longer hair to shorter hair like I'm doing right now. And you always wanna be very careful when you're doing that because it's very easy to take the hair too short as you're working your way down. I'd rather leave it longer and have to go in and fix it than accidentally take it too short and then have to take the other side shorter. So I'm being very careful of that, very cautious of that. I would say the majority of the time, if I leave one side longer, it's this side here because I'm being overly cautious, but I'm okay with that. Okay, and go back and correct any graduation I did. You can't see it as much on this side, so I'll most likely have to go back in when I'm done and correct that, but I'm gonna double check and see if my length is okay here, if I did it pretty even on either side. It feels pretty good. Maybe a little longer behind the ear there. Let me just go back in. This is that same side I struggled with before. Definitely has a weird shape back here. So I'm just gonna go in and just cut that a little bit. And then we'll move on to our graduation. Okay, so for our graduation, I do not like to graduate the hair above the occipital bone. Above the occipital bone is still gonna be layered exactly like we did in the last haircut. I like my graduation to live below the occipital bone and to the hairline. And I don't want my graduation to follow past the ear if I'm wanting a solid design line. If I'm okay with having holes, then you can graduate all the way to the front, you can graduate to the ear, you could do whatever you want there, but you are gonna have a hole in your design line. It will not look like a solid bob. So if you want a solid bob, I'm gonna teach you how to do that. We're gonna section this away from the occipital bone. We want this to be nice and even all the way across. And here's the trick. We want to expose the design line all the way through. You can do anywhere from a half an inch to an inch but I wanna be able to see that as I'm graduating, I'm not cutting into this line. I wanna see that solid line there. Okay, we're gonna do the same thing on the other side. If you've ever done a bob and cut a hole behind the ear when you're graduating, you know how devastating that can be because there's really no going back from it. You can't really cut the hair much shorter to try to hide that hole. It's there and it's just a huge bummer. And so this is why I came up with this technique so that you could avoid that ever happening to you again. And it ends up being a faux blend from back to front. So it still looks blended. It doesn't look disconnected, but you won't end up with those holes and you'll feel confident the next time you do this haircut. All right, so we're gonna section this away. Keep it nice and clean. Use however many clips you need to in order to keep this 
sec sectioned away. Um, okay. So, just like we determined on the design line, how wide the neck is, which is here, and that's how much we did straight across, that's how much we're going to graduate straight out from where the hair grows before we start overdressing that graduation. We don't want to bring out that graduation straight out from where it grows all the way around so that that graduation's even if our design line is not even. If we have an asymmetric design line, we have to overdirect our graduation in order for that shape to follow one another. If we don't do that, you will end up with uneven layers that disconnect from your length and make this length pop out. It won't look like a bob and it won't look cohesive. So whatever we do here, we need to follow here. So our first three sections are gonna be straight out from where it grows. From there, we're gonna start over directing back one section until the corner and we're gonna over direct a little bit more back so that we dip those layers down once we get to the layer part. Um, as far as the graduation, we're gonna stop right before this hairline. Okay, so we're gonna start right down the center. You can either comb or clip this hair away. If you're not sure what angle to do, start your angle longer. Let's see here. Comb it down and see if that's falling where you want it to fall. If you don't like that, bring that angle up a little higher. If you're standing in front of your fingers, the more you see the fingertips, the longer that will be and the smaller the graduation will be. The more your fingertips point towards the ceiling, the higher that line will be and the more layer of graduation you're gonna see under here. You can do it that way. You can do it by saying a 45 degree angle, whatever makes sense to you so that you can do it consistently throughout the whole back of the head. Okay, so I'm gonna bring that up just a little higher so it's fairly extreme so you can see it from the camera. I'm gonna come up a little bit more like so. Normally I have my finger here because I'm gonna rest the back of my blade on this finger so that I can keep a really nice clean line. I'm gonna bring this finger away so that you can see it, but just know that it's harder to do this cut if you don't have that finger there to rest on. Cutting to my second knuckle, I'm gonna bring my fingers down. Now my knuckles are resting on the back of the head and I'm gonna get that all the way down there. I want that line to be the same all the way up. Like if it just kept going, it would just keep going like that, all the way to the ceiling. Okay, so that's our first cut. We want the first three cuts to be straight out from where it grows. And you just wanna follow the, the design line. If you take a section and the design line has started curving down, then you wanna over direct that back. Okay. So what I'm looking for is this and this match. And as this starts coming down, I know that I need to start over directing that graduation to have this graduation here reflect that. So in this section here, I'm gonna over direct back one section. And whatever I do here, I need to do on the other side. So just like I've done before, I'm gonna jump back and forth so that I don't forget what I'm doing and cause more or less graduation on one side or the other. So now you can see that this weight line is following 
this design line. And we're gonna do one side over here, where I over direct that in. Combing is so important, keep your combing clean. Don't let those hairs cross over one another. Okay, so now my graduation is following my design line. From here, I'm gonna work back on this side and I'm gonna bring that back two sections. I want to make sure that I'm not cutting into the hairline, so I'm gonna glance at that hairline and make sure that none of that is in my graduation because if it is in my section, I will cause a hole at that hairline. And once that hole's there, it's there. Okay, we're gonna go to this side and we're gonna over direct back two sections. Double checking that I don't have any of that hairline in my section. And if I have room to take one more section and I don't hit that hairline, I'll take it. If not, I'm leaving it alone. I want about a quarter to half an inch of that hairline left out. So what I'm gonna do, I still have the hairline left out, but I'm gonna pull a little bit of this hair out just to make sure that stays thick enough. To do that, I have all my hair in my hand. I have it nice and combed in, but I'm gonna go behind and pull a little bit of that hair out. And then I'm gonna go in and cut. I have this over directed three sections. Okay. And then we're gonna do the same thing on this side. If I can get it in there without touching that hairline, I will. Over direct it back three sections. Make sure that I get all that out of there and I'm going to cut this in. I'm going to flip my fingers because I'm having a hard time holding that. If you have to do that, just make sure that angle stays the same. It's really easy to change that angle. When you cut above your knuckle, it tends to end up being very round. Okay. Now, although graduation does not live above the occipital bone, this hair is still gonna fall into there. And so I want to cut that in before I move on. And it is easiest to do that when it's wet, but you can also do it once it's dry. We're just gonna follow the same pattern. Three sections that are straight out from where it grows, then the next section's over-directed one, the next section over-directed two sections, and then the last section's over-directed three, and then we dry it. Okay, so I'm just gonna bring this hair down at an angle, comb it into my section. Since this is all gonna be layered, I just want to basically blend it in. I'm gonna do one section over here that's straight out from where it grows. Don't let that hair cross over. You can see your guide in there too, so if you feel like it needs to be over-directed, always over-direct it. Um, it's always better to conserve length. You can always fix that later. Once you cut it, it's gone. Okay, and then we're gonna over-direct back. Over direct back. Keep that combing nice and clean. Don't let those hairs cross over. That's going to be the hardest part of this haircut is keeping the combing very clean. So easy to mess that up. Okay. 
over directing all the way back at this point. Um, so at least two sections, if you're not sure, over direct it three. I'm gonna come over my knuckle here because I'm having a hard time reaching. And I'm just gonna cut in that hair there. There's my guide. Okay. Over directing this three sections. over my knuckle just because I was struggling palm to palm to get the shape I wanted to get and that's it okay we're only cutting to just behind that back hairline here and we're leaving all of this out okay it's not gonna look like much right now as you dry it and you get into finishing it you're gonna see that shape really come alive and we're gonna do the same thing that we did with the last haircut where we start with the smaller brushes through the bottom and then start working on to the top uh, the bigger brushes as we work towards the top So once you have it all nice and dried evenly, we're going to go in and first check our design line. It's probably going to look a little wonky. Don't worry. Don't freak out. That's why you go in and you finish. Okay. go in and then I'm going to create a nice soft blended line there Now, I'm going to assess the graduation that I put in there. And if I see that I dropped my guide at any point, I'm going to go in and I'm going to clean that back up. And what I'm talking about is you can see a little bit of a step. The color helps me to be able to see that as well. And part of it's going to look a little stepped because she has existing highlights in there that I need to clean up with the cut. But I'm going to go back through, I'm going to over direct and there it is right there. Now as I'm correcting, I'm not gonna do a lot of blunt lines. I'm gonna do a lot of point cutting to blend. 
because sometimes as you're trying to do this and create uh, finishing, if you do it blunt, it can look a little choppy. So we wanna now keep with very soft lines. Now I'm gonna go back towards the center here and I can see that this shape here is not gonna work. Here's my guide and there's that. Before I cut anything, I need to make sure I don't have my design line in my shape and I don't. So I'm gonna go in and cut that in just by point cutting. And that's already starting to come together a lot better. I'm gonna go in here again, combing out my design line, bring this hair back, traveling it back. It is hard to work with graduation once the hair is dry. And just deeper point cuts to blend and let that down. Okay, now I'm gonna do the same thing on this side. Coming to the center here, just making sure I'm happy with this shape. Point cutting in anything that I feel isn't blending properly. So like right there. And remembering to over direct the amount that I need to to make sure these layers follow the shape of the design line and don't cut in to the design line behind the ear okay I'm going to take up this last piece some of the hairline is in there if I cut that that will create a hole I don't want that I'm going to drop that out and then I'm going to check this hair here that it's blending properly as I bring it all the way back. And you can see that it's a little longer and I'm just going to blend that in. Okay. I'm happy with the way that's laying on either side. The last thing I'm going to do is go up and I'm gonna make sure that I see that shape there and if anything doesn't blend as I'm doing that I'm gonna cut into it just point cutting if I need to help myself comb I'm gonna put my scissors the back of my scissors up there hold it so I can get my comb back up and now I'm gonna point cut right here to break up the heaviness Okay. Now I'm happy with the rest of this, other than I don't like that I can see the highlights in there, but you know, that's neither here nor there. If she got a new color, you wouldn't see it anymore. I'm gonna double check the length one more time, make sure I'm pretty happy with that shape. And then I'm gonna tip her back up because I don't wanna work any further past here without her being tipped back up. It is very easy to cut holes behind the ear if you do too much of the design line with your client tipped forward. Okay, I'm gonna check the rest of the design line here. That's where I took the ear into account, so I'm gonna go ahead and clean that up because it's a little too long. And let's check this side. This side's not so bad, but it is a little bit bare, so I'll clean that up. Okay, so now we need to blend our graduation with this corner here. So what I'm gonna do is on either section behind the ear, <clears throat> I'm gonna bring this hair out, holding it at an angle, dropping out the design line, and I'm gonna do some faux graduation right through there. And I'm just doing that by point cutting. 
and that's going to help blend that hair right there that couldn't be graduated because we would cut into the hairline. Okay, same thing on this side. I'm not even over directing it back as much. I just want to be able to have enough length to be able to cut into it. Okay, bringing it back. And here's my old graduation. Here's the hair that's not graduated. And we're just going to do some faux graduation there with the hair that is over the ear above the ear that we won't be graduating and that's going to help blend that away okay now So we're done with the graduation. We're going to move on to the next step, which is layering above the occipital bone, but below the parietal ridge from this entire panel right through here. We're going to follow the over direction that we did on the design line, which was one inch straight out from where it grows, then starting to gradually over direct and then really over directing through the sides. So we're going to go ahead and do that right now. Again, if you're not comfortable having all of this hair in your section, definitely section out above the parietal ridge. I'm going to leave it and work with it in there because it, I, I like to have it in there because it helps me have a guide for the top. Like some of the top is already cut at that point if I do that. So this is the section that's right in the middle. Just taking a larger section, but you could take three smaller sections straight out from where it grows. And then I'm gonna start over directing. So this is gonna be over directed one section here. Make sure you don't elevate. We just want this coming straight out from where it grows and we don't want our fingers this way or that way. We just want our fingers straight up and down. And the fact that we're cutting over our knuckle will create some roundness. Um, which is great for this shape. Bobs are round. Over directing back one section. There's not going to be a whole lot to cut, but you want to go through every section anyway so that nothing gets missed. Okay, I'm going to go back and forth again. Now I'm going to over direct two sections. And now I'm going to over direct three sections. And now from here, I'm going to over direct all the way back behind the ear to that back section and just cut in anything that makes it. A lot of it probably won't and that's okay. Okay, and we're going to come back over here, over direct two sections. Then we're going to over direct three sections. And then we're going to over direct all of this all the way back to that back section. Okay. And this step is now complete. If you feel like you've got a hard line there, you can always go in and do a little more point cutting following where the hair is laying. If the hair is coming in this way, I don't want to go in and cut. I'll cut a hole. So if it's this way, you'll see me turn my scissors that way. And then as it's straight and then going that way. So that helps blend that line a little bit more because you are going to have some heavy lines doing graduation. It's just the nature of the haircut. Okay, so this step is now complete. We've layered all the way through here. We've done step one, our, gradu our design line. Step two, we've done our graduation. Step three, we've now layered this panel here. Step four, we're gonna layer the crown. We're gonna take the hair down the center. Most of this is already gonna have been established for us, but we're still gonna go through it anyway and just point cut through this area and blend to this longer hair here, okay? Bring everything to that center part and 
do the same thing. We're not cutting any length, we're just basically connecting point A to point B, and if there's length in between there, great, but we're not cutting any length from point A, and we're not cutting any length from point B. I can usually get this crown done in about three sections or so, over directing over the part line, and that's done. All right, now we're gonna go into uh, one, two, three, five. Step five is gonna be blending our parietal ridge, and that's right there. And we're gonna make sure that we over direct because we over directed everywhere else, so we don't wanna cut anything shorter or you'll have a big chunk missing. Okay, over directing this all the way back. Going back to the center, over directing back. Over directing more back or further back and going all the way to the center and over directing all the way back. And we're done. Okay, once that step is done, we're going to determine if we want to do anything in the front. Do you want a curtain bang? Do you want face framing? Um, is there anything you want done in the front and you would do that then? And then we're going to work on finishing. Now, this particular doll head already had some finishing in the last bob that we did, so there's probably not a whole lot to do. But mostly, I would just come in and check if anything seems like it's not blending. If there's color that seems like it's causing it to look spotty, I'm going to bring it up and I'm going to point cut into that. On this side, I'm going to bring it up. If I see anything that's not blending the way I want to. Um, all in all, I'm really happy with the way it's laying. I'm gonna check the design line one more time. I'm just gonna kind of get down like this so I can really see under here. If I was working you know, on a client, I would maybe pump up the chair and sit in my stool, um, something like that. So I'm just gonna clean this up. I want this nice and clean. Again, you can do this with clippers. If you have design scissors, really tiny scissors, those, those work great as well for something like this. You just want this cut looking really nice and crisp and clean. You want everything to be intentional. Right where her hairline comes down into a uh, point, you're seeing that. Uh, on a person, I would just take my razor or my trimmers and just kind of clean that up. But. And then this here is bugging me, so I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of that. And this is what's gonna set your cut apart, is all this finishing, all this detailing you do to create this beautiful cut for them. I think I'm pretty happy with that. Again, there's definitely some variation because of the existing color. So let me bring her over to the camera and show you a close up of this look. So here's the side, here's our graduation. Again, we've got a nice solid design line even though to create this means this is disconnected from this. It's not a true graduated bob because a true graduated bob would be all the way through to the front, meaning it would follow the hairline and then come back down. But in this case, this particular client doesn't want that. They want a solid line, which means we have to disconnect the two shapes and that's okay. You just need to know how to do it so you don't end up with holes. But there it is closer. And again, the only choppiness is coming from the color. And if I was going to do a bob like this, I would never want to put any highlights or color below about this area right through here. 
So it's okay if some of those highlights come to here. Once those highlights get into the graduation, if they come lower than uh, that, that crown area there, you will see spots. And so you have to spend a lot of time correcting that. So when someone wants highlights or color, I just tell them we only do a mini basically through the crown and maybe a few at the front hairline, but I really don't like to see any of that spottiness coming in through here. Um, this doll head had a lot of finishing in our last video, so I don't feel like she needs any finishing right now. If you wanna see any finishing techniques other than what we did back through here, go back to that other video and take a look. Um, we did some really fun things in there, so enjoy. Um, I hope you like it, and make sure you let me know if you have any questions in the comment section below.